Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the various question types you can use in Google Forms. So I've created a little scenario and I'm going to try and just go through all the different question types. It's a hypothetical scenario so maybe they wouldn't be exactly how I would do them normally but it will give you a good idea of what types there are and how you might want to use them. So I've set up my form for some training feedback and I've broken it down to three sections. One's for info, a review of the training and a review question. So I'm going to click on my first section and insert a question. And so if I look at the drop down, the first one we got here is short answer. So I'm just going to ask, what is your name? As you might have seen come up, it does try and often interpret what type of question you're doing and can adjust the question type accordingly. So we go to that again, remembering that if you must have this information, make sure it's ticked as required. So next, I'm going to add another question, and the type I want to use now is a drop down. So I'm going to ask which training course did you attend? So I'm going to add a few options in here. So when you're using a drop down, often you're thinking about a long list. Often I use this if I'm listing all the schools in our trust. But you're also thinking you want to make sure they give an exact answer. So I could have done this as a short answer text question. And they could have just typed in the name of the course. But it might have meant I had a number of different variations of the same answer. So they might have just put beginners or advanced for example but I want the correct name because then when it's exported into my data sheet later it'll be easier to sort. So add another question now and the question type this time I'm going to choose is paragraph but I'm just going to type in the question first. Describe how you found the training and so as you can see there it's automatically changed it to a paragraph. In comparison to the short answer, so your short answer, you're just thinking about a one line answer, whereas paragraph could be a lot longer. So we've collected our basic info, so now we're gonna go on and ask about the training. So I'm gonna add another question in here, and I want a multiple choice question. So I'm gonna ask question. As you'll see with all these questions, there is also an option to add an image for the question itself. So this can be really useful if you want to add an image that you then ask a question about. But for this one, I'm going to just put in a few options, docs. With these also, you can add an image. So I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to go to Google Image Search and just do a search with Google Docs. And I can select the logo. And at the end, you can add the other option if you want. And this will allow the audience to type in an answer of their own choice. So multiple choices are when there's one correct answer to the question. Our next question though is going to be the checkbox. And this is when you want to add more than one answer. So for this question, I'm going to ask which tool you want more training on. But instead of just repeating it all again, I'm going to delete this, duplicate this question, put my new question title in and change this to a checkbox. So now they can tick more than one box if they wanted more training. So we're going to add another question and we're going to change this one to a file upload. So file uploads if you want the respondents to add a file that is then put into your Google Drive. Just so you know this currently doesn't work with shared drives so the form has to be located in a personal Google Drive. So if I click continue there, I can then choose whether I've got specific file types, how many they can add, and the maximum file size. So I'm going to add another question, and this one I'm going to choose as a linear scale. So linear scales are very good for surveys. So again, I could ask a question, how would you rate your trainer? So we can add the scale of 1 to 5 or whatever you might want up to 10, 1 being terrible 
10 being the best. So I'm going to add another question in here. And this time we're going to go for the multiple choice grid. So again, just like with the multiple choice questions, this will present the respondent an opportunity to just answer one answer per question. So I could ask, how did you find the training for each tool? So on the rows, I can put the tools. So I'm going to put again docs. And then the columns, I want to put the answer. So I could again put terrible, OK, and great. So then when they get this, they'll be able to tick one of those answers. So our last question type we're going to look at is the tick box grid. And so this is very similar to the multiple choice grid, but again, the key difference between multiple choice and tick boxes is that you can tick more than one answer. So I'm going to add a review question in. There were some other question types just at the very end, just to show you, and that is date and time. So I can add a date. And so this could be if I just want someone to say, for example, on what date did you attend the training? OK, so we've got our questions in. So we're just going to do a quick preview. So what is your name? I can choose my course, my drop down here. And then how did I found it? I found it great. I really enjoyed the variety. Then click next, it takes me to the next section. And this is where I put in the images. So which tool did you learn most about? I'd say sheets. And which tool do you require more training on? So I could say slides and forms. Add an example of your work. So you click add file and you can then drag that from your computer or add it from your drive. I click select and now I'll add that on there. How would you rate the trainer? Obviously they were very good, so I'm going to give them a nine. And how did you find the training for each tool? So docs was okay. Sheets I learned a lot from, so that was great. Slides, very good. Forms, not so good. Okay, then I'm going to click next. And so this is the tick box version. So which, which tool does what? So docs and slides, you can do voice typing. Embedding videos is in slides and they all have version history. And on what date? So we're going to pick today's date, 14th of August, and that puts that in there. So obviously then when I submit that, that will go through to the form owner and they'll get those responses. So I hope that gives you a good overview of all the different question types you can use in your Google Form.